There's this Wait. woman who's the editor of Science Magazine. Her name is Tanya Lewis. And she got COVID. And then she did this long thread about it, uh, about all this mitigation she did to not get it. And then she got it. And I just want to remind everybody that they knew that everybody was going to get COVID for quite a while. So this... This is what's funny is that people are still operating under the idea that there's a way to, to, to prevent yourself from getting COVID. That's like saying I'm going to prevent myself from getting the flu for the rest of my life or I'm going to present myself, prevent myself from getting a cold for the rest of my life. You could maybe do it. You could maybe do it. But do you know what kind of crazy isolation life? Well, hey, so let, here's Bill Gates. Now, the reason why I show Bill Gates is not because I like him or I think he's an expert on vaccines or anything, but the rest of the world turns to this guy. And so whatever the establishment, he's going to say whatever the establishment narrative is. So when he says something, that means even the establishment is admitting it. And so here he is trying to he's he's lying a little but he's going to first tell you that we couldn't we couldn't stop the spread of the covid virus. He's going to lie to you about the reason why, but he's going to admit we can't stop the spread. And then he's going to go on to tell you that the the covid virus not so bad as everyone made it out to be. So that's why this is important. And then at that point we didn't really understand the fatality rate. You know, we didn't understand that it's a fairly low fatality rate and that it's a disease mainly of the elderly, kind of like flu is, although a bit different. Than so I don't know if you heard that. It's a low fatality rate. And then at that point, we, we didn't, didn't really know, understand, didn't understand the it. fatality rate. You know, we didn't understand that it's a fairly low fatality rate and that it's a disease mainly of the elderly, kind of like flu is, although a bit different than that. So that's what that's what he's talking about. That's what COVID is. That's what it's always been. And the Great Barrington Declaration was correct, that they should have had targeted protection to people who were vulnerable, not everybody. So that they've been proven right, the Great Barrington Declaration, and people like Collins and Fauci and the NIH have been proven wrong. Uh, also, I want to let everybody know that COVID is not a threat to your kids. According to the CDC, among children, the mortality risk from COVID-19 is actually lower than from the flu. That was back during Delta, which was a more virulent strain. And they were saying that even then. Now it's Omicron, which is an even mild ver milder version of the virus. Here's what Dr. Fauci says. Hey, can you prevent yourself from getting it? Later, as we begin to live with it, what she was referring to is that virtually everybody is going to wind up getting exposed and likely get infected. But if you're vaccinated and if you're boosted, the chances of you getting sick are very, very low. Okay, but let me get the the main part there is is that virtually everybody is going to wind up getting exposed and likely get infected. Everybody, he said. The the word he used was everybody. Here's Joe Biden's original COVID czar director, and he said during Delta, before Omicron, which we know Omicron is way more contagious than Delta, he said that everyone will get the virus. That was back in August of 21. He would, that was Biden's original COVID czar director, and he said, everybody's going to get it. That was the, the, I knew this back in June when I interviewed Dr. Robert Malone. He, it took him a couple months to catch up to a pothead comedian in his garage, but he caught up. But nobody else did. Like, everybody's known this. And why do I bring it up? Because here's the editor of Science America. Is that the Science can you, Magazine? Can you look up the name of the magazine? She's the editor. Or is it of? Scientific American? At, I'm, we're going to find out. Uh, so she's the editor of a science magazine, and she knows nothing about what she's talking about. She knows she's she's become an expert on COVID. She's devoted her life three years. Scientific American. Scientific American. She's the editor. She's three years. She's devoted her life to COVID. She does a podcast all about it. And this thread I'm going to show you reveals she knows almost nothing about COVID that is useful or accurate. And and these are the people who think they're following the science. So they just do whatever Trump, the opposite of whatever Trump said, and they call that science. <laughs> so here, I, this is, here we go. She says, well, it happened after nearly three years of covering COVID and thinking about it almost constantly. It finally got me. But rather than focus on how I got it, really? <laughs> 
I'm going to tell you how I didn't get it for this long. No. <laughs> Can you just tell us how you got it? You know, since none of the other stuff matters, you know, because you got it. <laughs> yeah, right. This idea that you didn't get it is wrong. You got it. I got it later. I, like, I got it you, later. So what do you get out of that? So I locked myself in a closet for two two months with a mask. I didn't get it either. What does that prove? <laughs> she says, from the moment we had evidence that COVID might be airborne, I wore a mask. Because she's a good person. Mm. That's what that means. From the moment. Uh, but not just any mask. <laughs> That's my, my An N95 well-fitted, hurt your fucking head 24 hours a day KN95 mask. At first, these were really hard to come by, but now it's quite easy to find them. Here's how you can find a good one. I hate those ones, dude. They really are. Really bite into your ears. They really do. I didn't. I get a headache wearing them. I didn't wear it just some of the time. I wore it any time I was indoors in public or even outdoors if I was in a crowd. I wore one, one in my hallway of my apartment building, <laughs> even if there was nobody else around, because aerosols can linger in the air for a while. Wow, you really wore the hell out of that mask. <laughs> Some people would say you wore that mask religiously. <laughs> I think you can even take off a yarmulke sometimes. <laughs> uh, right? For the first year or two, I avoided spending time indoors in public as much as possible, with the exception of grocery stores or doctor's office. With the exception of grocery stores. So then what's the... <laughs> So then what? <laughs> so you're going indoors with hundreds of people and you're I'm only doing it for a couple hours. <laughs> the, at the, by the way, the places where I would say you're probably going to get it most likely a yes. doctor's office or a grocery store. Right. <laughs> uh, I avoided the subway for a while, although studies suggested trains weren't the biggest vectors for spread. So she didn't follow the science on that either. <laughs> so I avoided stuff that wasn't uh, uh, it's dangerous, and I went to stuff that was. <laughs> she did. It's she's the editor of the science magazine, wagging her finger at other people for not following the science. I did get on planes a few times to visit sick parent to visit a sick parent who needed my help. But from the moment I left my apartment to the moment I arrived, I didn't take off that mask. <laughs> I opened the windows in taxis like an asshole. I didn't eat or drink on the flights except to sip water like a fucking maniac. <laughs> While holding my breath. While holding my breath. <laughs> Wait, who? She's the science magazine editor. Do you normally breathe while you sip water? Wow. It's, it, first of all, it all sounds totally worth it so far. <laughs> <laughs> As soon as vaccines became available, I got mine. Me too. I've gotten every booster I could since then. Not me. <laughs> Including the new bivalent booster that targets Omicron. Despite its effectiveness, only 14% of people in the U.S. have gotten one. I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You got every booster and even the new vaccine for Omicron, you know, the one that's so effective, you got Omicron. <laughs> I got two shots and one, one COVID. So I got the same as her, but. I mean, you got, you got two, right. I got two Pfizer's and then now you got one Omicron. And then you got one. Okay. Because we know the coronavirus is airborne, I only ate at restaurants with outdoor seating, not a seated, a sealed in outdoor shack. <laughs> I bought portable air purifiers and a sign that said, kick me, I'm a maniac. <laughs> I bought portable air purifiers and a CO2 monitor to measure ventilation levels at home. I opened windows. <sighs> Now, to be, 
to be fair to her, I did also get an air purifier at home. We have it in our we have it in our studio. You got a portable one to hang around. <laughs> Is that what she had? One around her neck? I think she meant that. No. Oh. Oh, okay. If I was going to visit an elderly immunocompromised family member, I took lots of tests, PCR tests before traveling, and rapid tests for several days after arriving. I avoided possible exposures for a week or more before traveling. Now I don't understand this. She says I avoided possible exposures for a week or more before traveling. I thought you were doing that 24-7. Isn't that what you're doing? I avoided just for a week? Why just for a week? Were you extra indoors? What does that mean, right? Did you lock two doors around you? I <laughs> She would not see any people, I guess. So how did I finally get it? I don't know for sure, but I suspect it was from an office holiday gathering where most people were unmasked. I wore an N95 so everybody could tell that I'm a maniac. I wore an N95 except for briefly taking bites or sips. So you weren't using your mask. You were taking your mask off. <laughs> so you're wearing that and then you ruin it anyway because you take it off to eat and drink. Do you think the coronavirus is is respectful of meal times? <laughs> what in the f? How many? So now, how many people you're endangering by taking your mask off, science editor? Well, I I took it as she's saying most people are unmasked and kind of putting it on them. Like they, yeah, she, so she did was, her part. She, she does. Yeah, she is putting it on them. You're yeah. right. At this point in the pandemic, by the way, she's still going on. This is still going on. This thread. <laughs> Just tell me you got COVID. We got it. One tweet. I got COVID. Hey, you know, all that shit I did, it was for nothing. For nothing. At this point in the pandemic, with plentiful vaccines and antiviral treatments available, I decided it was worth it taking some calculated risks to do the things I enjoy. I don't believe that she calculated the risks. And I don't believe she enjoys things. I don't believe she enjoys things. <laughs> and I don't believe she calculated anything. I don't think she got out a, a, a calculator and calculated anything. I think she was threatened think with she, divorce is what I think. <laughs> I, I think she was like, screw it. I'm going to do this because I feel like it. And then she's going to say it calculated, which makes her sound responsible. Even though I was doing things that other people were doing, I was doing it calculatedly, not like everyone else willy-nilly sitting in a shack outside. <laughs> perhaps, wait, did I get everything? Uh, perhaps I was unlucky. No, you're just a human being and everybody's going to get this. Oh, I got a cold. I guess I'm just unlucky. <laughs> what? It rained on me. I'm unlucky. No, it rained on everyone. Perhaps I was unlucky, but I see it differently. I bet you do. <laughs> For nearly three years, I didn't get COVID or even a cold because I was acting like a maniac going through life in an unlivable way. Where is your Howard Hughes jars of urine and right? nail clippings? That's right. Yes, I was privileged to be able to work from home, and I don't have small children, which were huge advantages. But getting sick doesn't have to be inevitable. You just got it after all that shit. So you, just up is down, black is white, in is out. And you, what's inevitable isn't. You literally... Proved that proved it's inevitable. It, you proved it's inevitable. <laughs> she proved it. Uh, and what? And you know what this means? This means that you could have gotten the COVID virus at any point in your craziness. At any point, you could have gotten it. It didn't matter what you were doing. That's what this means. So you could have got it the first week. But you just didn't. So far, thankfully, I had a fairly mild case. You know why you had a fairly mild case? Because Omicron is much milder than the previous variants, which is why the what makes it such a maniac thing for you to act like you're going to catch AIDS. <laughs> 
what you're going to catch is Omicron, a mild coronavirus that has mild symptoms. You know what you're experiencing? That's what it gives you. And that's why you're such a maniac. And you're supposed to be the same. If she was just a regular person, I would be yelling. I would be mocking and making fun of the establishment media that made a person like that such a maniac. But she is the media. She's supposed to be the science editor. And she knows nothing about COVID. Nothing. And everything she thinks she knows is destructive and unhelpful. So far, thankfully, I've had a fairly mild case. I am so grateful for access to great vaccines, good health care, and a job that lets me work remotely so I don't infect others. Everyone is going to get it. And then you get natural immunity. I hope this thread has been helpful. It hasn't. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's helpful as an instructive. You could point to that. See what th this did to people. It's helpful in that way as an example of how crazy people got around this. And I wish everyone a happy and healthy holiday season. Do you think masking and being a maniac like that for three years is healthy? It's not mentally healthy for sure. And then you don't have, then your immune system doesn't get a workout fighting other bugs. And they're saying now that a lot, I'm getting reports that they're saying that people are getting a lot sicker now because they, uh, their immune system hasn't had a workout for three years. Yeah, right. They haven't had a cold. They haven't had a flu. They haven't had anything. I love what this guy says. This is a guy, follows guy. He says, hi, I'm the editor of a scientific magazine which claimed to provide factual and balanced coverage of the pandemic. I got COVID. In this thread, I will reveal all the irrational things I did for years to avoid COVID out of touch with America to explain why our coverage was so biased. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what she did that would have been nice if that's what she actually did i'm going to let you know why i was such a maniac and why the why how we covered covid was incorrect over the top inflammatory this is under her thread this is so, this is like the first comment i saw under her thread this guy says wow this is me almost exactly he did all those mitigation Wait, things. Cynthia. So oh, I'm Cynthia. sorry, Cynthia. And it's a professor. Wow, this is me almost exactly, except for the portable air purifier. Well, I'm glad you didn't go that far. I think I was exposed on a three-hour train ride from Sligo to Dublin, where I wore my NKKN95 the entire time. Didn't even take it off for a drink of water. Well, then what makes you think you got it then on that train ride? Why would you think that's where you got it? It's probably where you didn't get it. But no one else was masked. Right. That's the same? That's it. But no one else was masked, and there was lots of sneezing and coughing. Those goddamn unmaskers. I didn't get the Bible and booster because I left for Ireland right before it came out. But had two previous boosters. My combo was a J&J &J and a Moderna twice. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow, the best ones. <laughs> no Paxlovid was available in Ireland except for severe cases, but mine was mild. Really? Another mild Wait, case? so you didn't get the bi bivalent Didn't booster, even get the booster. And it was also mild? And it was still mild. Wow. Wow. She started a club for the we should, two I most unbearable people to be around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And why would you be running around if you... So what I learned from this thread is that she doesn't trust the vaccines. She doesn't trust the vaccines. No, they, they've because accepted she's, it means it means it does... Like, these, this is a professor. That's a professor. They've accepted that vaccine means you're going to get the thing still. <laughs> they've accepted that. Well, now they're accepting it. But like, so even if you get COVID, if you're vaccinated, it will be a mild disease, right? So what are you worried about? Where's the what? deadly Omicron? There's no such what? fucking thing. Where? There's no need to call it mild. It's Omicron. Omicron's the one that's not deadly. Like it's like, mild. It's there's. I'm sure there's still people who die 
with Omicron. Uh, but it is much less uh, deadly and much more contagious than 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 Delta and the previous strains. Delta, I was afraid of getting. I remember when it was when that. Was I was like, a, I I was afraid of getting Delta, and it turns out I shouldn't have been. Yeah. You know, turns out I shouldn't have been. Um, but you had plenty of great vaccines. That's why I wasn't afraid. I I had the vaccine. So her name is Tanya Lewis, and she's the editor of that. What is it called? Scientific American. Scientific American. Is that the name of that? Mm -hmm. And if you're reading that magazine, I'm going to guess you don't know anything about anything. And the things you think you know are wrong. What a what a wow. Why would she do that? Twitter. I'm sure Scientific American some time ago started to suck. You know, like, yeah. like all of them. Yeah. I'm sure they got, a, you know, a lot of like <laughs> papers on toxic masculinity or something. Boy. <laughs> rather than science, you know. Wow. Hey, we're doing live stand up comedy in Los Angeles, December 9th, 16th, 23rd and 30th. And we're going to be in Tempe, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Nashville. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. See you there.